All right, we're going to make a simple addition calculator. Not very exciting, but it's an important skill. Um, we talked about user input in this Madlib program, and that user input was a string, whereas here we want to get numerical input. So we're going to talk about data types and operations and the idea of numerical input. How do we do that? Okay. Um, so you know what? To start off with, I'm actually going to open up my console, and I just, oh dear. You know, I'm going to go to apparently Google uh, Drive or Google Docs have a lot of stuff in them. Let's go to a new tab and open up my console. That's a little cleaner. I'll just hit clear. Um, and remember, this is JavaScript I can do in here. And I just want to talk about data types. Um, we talked about variables before. So let name be assigned, you know, Mr. V. Right, I type name and it's got these quotations around it. This is called a string. You can actually test things with a type of function. So type of name, like so, and it returns string. Okay, because that's the type of data it is. Uh, we could go let number be assigned five. So notice no quotations, it's just a number. If I go type of number, it returns number. Right, and it can be decimals. You can actually just do type of 3.14. That's a number. Type of hello. That's a string. Even if we put a number inside of quotations, it still returns as a type of string. Because it just views this, it doesn't view this as a number. It's just a character. It's just a symbol to display on the screen, right? Okay. So those are two of the main data types. There's more, but the two main ones are string and number so far that we've worked with. Okay. Now you can do operations with these things. We've already seen that we can add strings together. Hello plus name adds those two strings together just by putting them side by side. We can also add numbers together. Two plus three is five. There's also subtraction and there's multiplication with a star. There's division, six divided by two. There's remainder. This It's called modulus or remainder, I guess. Six divided by two would give you a remainder of zero, right? It divides evenly. But if I did seven remainder two, it'd be like if I divided seven by two, it would go in three times with a remainder of one, okay? You can do um, to the power of, this would be two, star star is to the power of three. 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. Um, there's also this math object that has like a square root function. So math.square root is of 25 is 5. So you can use the math object for that. Um, these are all numerical calculations. Okay, operations and stuff. So we've got data types. We've got numbers and strings. Let's just make a quick note of that. Do, 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 do. Don't need it so big. Numbers and strings. And then actually some numbers, and you can do your basic math operations with those. Uh, can't type. And strings, really, the main operation we do is we add strings together. Officially, it's called concatenation. Or another way to think of it is like it joins them together. Okay, um, and we'll also make a note of the, the math object for like math.square root, stuff like that. There's way more in the math object. You can look it up if you want, but for now, that should get you by if you need square roots for anything. All right, now let's do a little program similar to um, a little calculator program. I'm going to, it's actually very similar to the Madlib program, except we're going to do some math instead of just building a message. So I'm actually going to copy and paste Madlib, and I'm going to rename it Simple Addition. And I can right-click and open with code because I installed at the, that option when I installed it. But you can also just take this and drag it into here, and it should relaunch as you'll do code with a Simple Addition. Cool. Now, of course, we'll have to change some things. Let's go index.html. All right. So inside of here, instead of Madlib, of course, we'll replace that with simple addition. This H1 will be simple addition. 
Uh, the instructions, I don't even know if we need instructions, should be pretty simple. I will just do two numbers, enter two numbers, and then hit the, or click, hit, click the calculate button. So my input, let's go, you know, number one, and number two, and we don't need this paragraph because we're only going to two. We should change these IDs because we want to make sure things are, are meaningful, right? So let's give this num1, and let's give this the ID num2, okay? This button, we're going to call this the calc button, and it will simply say calculate on it. And then output, that's fine. We can do that. Um, actually, maybe what we can do is we could do something like the sum of the two numbers is... And then you can do like a span tag. And I'll just put some dashes in there for now because we don't have an answer. And we'll give this the ID um, result. And I guess this paragraph doesn't need an ID now because we'll just select the span tag and change its content to output the result. Make sense? Input, click the button, and we've got a spot to put our answer in. All right, good. And then our main.js, let's see what that does. So again, we'll change this to simple addition lesson. Add event listener is good, except we just need to change it to a calc button. Click event, and let's call our function calculate. Makes sense to me. Calculate. And then we'll let num1 be assigned document get element by id num1 it's okay to have these the same variable or the same name because this is the id in the html and this is a javascript variable um i i, I think that's fine i don't think there should be any problem so we'll get that element by id and get its value change this to num2 we'll get that num2 Right, the input elements have the IDs num1 and num2, so we'll select those input elements and get their values. And we don't need that third one. Now here's the difference. We're going to change this. We're going to do our process, it's called. This is actually a very common algorithm. Um, it's called an IPO algorithm, or an input process, and then output. And our process is going to be let um, total be assigned num1 plus num2. Really simple, right? The variable, they should, they should store what the user typed in, and I'm going to add them together and store it in total. Um, I think we had called that result dot inner HTML is assigned total. Right? So when I click this button, it's going to run the calculate function. Here's the calculate function. I get the input from these input elements, the values of them. I use those values and add them together and store the result in a variable. And then I find this result element right here. Span is that result element. And I assign it to be whatever the total is. Okay, save. Let's see what happens. Um, I guess I should launch this, go live. All right, I like to open my console. It's nice to have that open just in case there's any error messages. Let's try 25 plus 2. No, seven. Calculate. Wow. JavaScript is good at math. 25 plus seven should be 32, and we got 257. All right. We talked about this before. 25 plus seven is 257, right? If we add strings together, it just joins them together. Concat concatenation, it joins them together. So, what happens here is that when I get the value of an input element, it returns as a string. So I'm adding these two strings together into a total, and it just prints out that string. Okay. Now, something we can do, this is kind of fun, is uh, our input element by default is a text input element. But you can go type equals, and then in quotations, we can go number. And a lot of people think this is going to fix the problem. Um, let's see what happens when we do this. So see, these little arrows weren't here before. And if I hit um, five, if I try to hit letters, it doesn't do anything. 
E is a special letter that can be used in numbers for an exponent type thing, but if most letters don't work, so that's part of it being a number input element, and these arrows allow me to increase. Okay, so that's just changing this input element. But when I calculate, I still get 7 and 8. Even though I said, hey, please make this be of type number, when I get the value of these input elements, it still returns it as a string. Okay, even though it says type number, the, the type number just changes kind of the behavior of this input element um, as these little arrow things, but the value still returns a string. All right, so how do we fix it? Well, we can use the number function that takes in a string and it tries to convert it to a number. Notice it doesn't have the quotations anymore. It converted that string into a number. This works great unless your string is like seven, <laughs> right? It doesn't understand that the word seven and this NAN is not a number, okay? So we're, we're just gonna, we can do input checking and stuff, but for now we're just gonna assume that the user is gonna enter the right value. What I can do now is this value, right? This thing right here returns that string. I can go number and I do an open and close parenthesis around this value. So this is a string. It goes inside of the number function, which will convert it to a number and then store it in num1. Okay, I do the same thing here and that should convert them to numbers. And now let's see if our math is right. Nine plus eight is not 98, it should be 17. Okay, so it does treat it now as actual numbers. Cool. Okay, so again, this event listener stuff should be good. The function, right, so this input process output, we're getting the value of that input element, but we're adding that converting it to a number. Um, and generally, it's a good idea to do that. If you expect the input to be numerical input, convert it to a number before you store it in the variable. And then when you do these operations, these are two numbers and it'll do the actual addition, the math addition, not a join together, but a math addition. Okay, that's it. All right, so numerical input, uh, maybe a note we could make here is that, um, well, that's big. Uh, we could make a note, um, input, uh, sorry, value of input elements always returns a string use this number function to convert to a number. Bum, ba, da, um, okay, hope that makes sense. This is actually this IPO algorithm. Um, we'll do more complicated stuff than just simple addition, but this is kind of a one credit uh, where the this algorithm is important, being able to get user input, store it in variables, do calculations on it, and output the result um, is structured programming one. So we'll do a more complicated one, and then I'll get you guys to do some practice on this. And that'll uh, be one of the, the key structured programming skills that you need to know. All right. Hope that made sense. And take care and see you in the next video.